welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dolika Jati Sharma. I am an assistant professor in English at Guwahati University. The present module is titled Self Fashioning and the Gender Question. This module draws upon the discourse of difference and identity formation and it tends to offer a quote unquote gender perspective in terms of the representative writers and their negotiation with such ideas. The discussion of major female writers in all genres is a categorical choice to help the readers engage with the continuing debate concerning the formation of self. The module is designed to read the history of Indian writing in English by addressing the larger intellectual framework of self-fashioning and the politics of resistance in terms of negotiating the structures of knowledge, history of imperial domination and the consequent effects on the national imaginary from the perspective of female writers. Therefore, this module will address all aspects of women's writing, creative, generic and cultural, to address questions on gender roles, uh, their subjugation under patriarchy and the question of othering, among others. Starting with poets like Torudat and Sarojini Naidu, the mapping of the cultural contours of creative space has always been the chief concern in women's writings in India. We witness a transition from the national to the personal, from the early writings to post-independence writings as the thematic preoccupations change over time. Bruce King voices this visible shift when he says that the writers, quote, had moved on from such colonial and nationalist themes as the rewriting of legends, praise of peasants, and from general ethical statements to writing about personal experiences, unquote. This module is designed to help you, for, firstly, to read critically the history of Indian writing in English from the perspective of female writers. Secondly, to understand the important socio-cultural events and contexts instrumental to their conceptualization of self. Thirdly, to position the major writers in the proper historical context. Fourth, to apprehend their major thematic preoccupations and finally to understand the feminist concerns addressed in their writings. Now, when we come to literary representations, we have to start with Torudat, who was born in 1856 and died in 1877. Dutt, hailed as the first modern Indian poet writing in English, infuses the subjective as well as cultural dimensions of her experience into her writing. The influence of Victorian Romantic tradition is visible in her poetry. Her first publication, A Sheaf Gleaned in French Fields, published in 1876, comprises translations of 70 French poets. The collection of lyric poems, posthumously published as Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan, published in 1882, infuses Indian myths and legends into poetic experiments. Her other writings include an English translation of the sonnets of Paul de Grammont, a fragment of an unfinished romance, Bianca or the Young Spanish Maiden, and a complete French novel, Le Journal the Mademoiselle Darvers. Uh, Sarojini Naidu, uh, who was born in 1879 and died in 1949, was better known as a public orator and she was a prominent figure in the Indian nationalist movement and became the first woman president of the Indian National Congress. Her works like The Golden Threshold, published in 1905, The Bird of Time, Songs of Life, Death and the Spring in 1912, The Broken Wing, Songs of Love, Death and Destiny in 1917, The Feather of the Dawn in 1961, among others, are works where she integrates 
the romantic conceptualization of India as a land of myths and legends with representations of urban and rural life and celebration of the unique experience of women and womanhood. Public and private become integrated in her verses and these verses become thereby replete with patriotic sentiments and a reverent worshipping of motherland India. Naidu's conscious effort to Indianize her verse leads to the proliferation of mythical heroines like Sita, Savitri, legendary figures like Padmini of Chittor and Princess Zebun Nisa in her poems. Kamala Das was born in 1934, is again a very well known Indian English writer after independence. The poetry of Das, a bilingual writer born in Malabar, Kerala, is frank, confessional and registers a protest against the traditional role of women. With Das, the desire to develop and fashion a sense of self which is trapped within social and cultural conventions comes to the fore as she explores the question of choice and freedom, emotional and sexual needs of women. Raised in a matrilineal society in Kerala, the institution of marriage, the female body and sexuality come under rigorous examination in her collections like Summer in Calcutta, The Descendants, The Old Playhouse and Other Poems and Collected Poems Volume 1. Eunice de Souza, born in 1940, is known for her collections like Fix, 1979, Women in Dutch Painting, published in 1988, Ways of Belonging, New and Selected Poems in 1990 and Selected and New Poems in 1994. Her poetry is replete with the precision of a miniaturist and being a part of the group of Bombay poets, she offers a unique perspective beyond the common things of relationships, love and marriage in terms of dramatizing the female self in a cold, ironic manner. The use of satire distinguishes her poems on church, marriage, and especially the depiction of the Goan community. The conflicting relationship between Goan Catholics and Hindu India is predominant in her verse. She has also edited nine Indian women poets. Monica Varma, born in 1916, too explores similar concerns in her collection Dragonflies Draw Flame in 1962, Past Imperative 1972, Alkananda in 1976. Her acute responsiveness to nature distinguishes her voice. Gauri Deshpande, born in 1942, is known for collections like Be Between Birds in 1968, Lost Love 1970, Beyond the Slaughterhouse 1972, and she too infuses an an acute evocation of consciousness about nature and the experience of questions of freedom and choice in man-woman relationships. Ruth Vanita's A Play of Light, which came out in 1994, contrasts the image of Sita with Saraswati, whereas Menka Shivdasani's Nirvana at 10 rupees, which came out in 1990, shows that social conventions and cultural myths are disturbing for the creative self. Shivdasani, a journalist, is one of the founding members of the Bombay Poetry Circle in 1986. She explores the themes of urban squalor, anxieties, problems of living alone as a single woman in her poems. Mukta Samrani's The Woman in This Room Isn't Lonely in 1997, Charmaine D'Souza's A Spelling Guide to Women in 1990, and Tara Patel's Single Woman in 1991 to explore similar concerns as these. Mamta Kalia, who was born in 1942, emerges as a powerful voice who views love, marriage, relationship, sexuality, family, and society with wit and irony as expressed in Tribute to Papa in 1970 and poems in 1978. The predominance of the figure of the father as the symbolic representation of the patriarchal order informs a poetry of protest against categorical norms of social institutions. 
Melanie Silgado's The Earthworm's Story also explores similar things but in a less critical manner in terms of the depiction of the Goan community and a rebellion against categorical gender roles. India's Dharkar, who was born in 1954, is consciously feminist and infused with political commitment and gender roles. Her poems offer a unique perspective on feminist concerns about the alienation of the self. The veil or the parda becomes a symbolic representation of this alienation, occupying a problematic space, a borderline as expressed in her first volume, Parda, which came out in 1989. In Parda, Tharkar offers the experience of growing up as a woman in an Islamic society. Parda II elaborates on how the symbolic veil divides and suppresses. The four sections explore the symbolic significance of the veil and projects a world of suppression and stifling circumstances. Postcards from God, coming out in 1994, continues the feminine aspects or feminist ideas of entrapped existence and constant remapping of gender roles. As far as prose is concerned, uh, prose began in uh, relation to women writers with Trupa by Satyanandan who was born in 1862 and died in 1894. She is the only woman writer to write two novels, Kamala, a story of Hindu life and Saguna, a story of native Christian life in English in 19th century India. These Bildung's romans sketch her concern with gender roles, caste system, ethnicity and cultural identity in the context of the plight of women refusing to be categorized in the model of everyday domesticity. Cornelia Sorabji uh, who lived from 1866 to 1954, is preoccupied with the plight of traditional women who lived in Parda. Women confined to the Zanana were central to her social work. Her works include Love and Life Behind the Parda, which came out in 1901, Sun Babies, Studies in the Child Life of India in 1904, and Sun Babies, 1920, and between the Twilights being studies of Indian women by one of themselves in 1908. She projects her sympathy towards women subjugated by domestic patriarchy and the romanticization of Indian history as well as the reflection on her life in Britain and India, which finds expression in a retelling of Indian mythologies and legends in the tales of the great ones among men, women and bird people. The theme of alienation distinguishes the novels which came out in the 1950s and 60s. As opined by Shamla Narayan, the women writers quote phrased the conflict in relation to the condition of women, but emancipation in their novels is often figured in terms of personal release into what seems a very literary realm of transcendence. Unquote. Kamla Markanda born in 1924, a remarkable novelist, explores the themes of conflict between tradition and modernity, erosion of values in the East and the West, idea of progress, human relationships in Nectar in a Sieve in 1954, a handful of rice in 1966, the golden honeycomb in 1977, the coffer dam dance in 1969 and Pleasure City in 1982. Nayantara Sehgal was born in 1927. Uh, in her novels depicts uh, the shallow and hypocritical life of the elite, rich section of Indian society and the Indian heritage and its value for the, edu for the educated Indian. In her first novel, A Time to be Happy in 1958, the narrator protagonist Sanad articulates the problem of identity crisis rampant amongst the English educated elite. Major national events like the partition of Punjab along linguistic lines in 1965, the emergency from the background of her novels. She deals with the status of women, politics, corruption of civil servants, 
sati as entrapment of women in conjugal life. Plans for Departure, 1986 and Mistaken Identity, 1988 deal with the Raj and the independence movement. Ruth Pravar Jhabwala, born in 1927, is famous for novels like The Householder in 1960, In Search of Love and Beauty in 1983, Shards of Memory in 1995, Three Continents, 1987, A Background Place, 1965, and Heat and Dust in 1975. Heat and Dust, in fact, won the Booker Prize, and here she offers ironic studies of the interaction between India and Britain. Shashi Lesprande, born in 1938 in The Dark Holds No Terrors in 1980, Roots and Shadow in 1983, that Long Silence in 1988 and Small Remedies in 2000 deals in a direct way with the situation of women in urban middle-class life. Anita Desai, who was born in 1937, on the other hand, primarily deals with the psychology of her characters, especially the female ones. Psychological studies of self-fashioning in terms of relationship between women and men, women and society, Emotional traumas crowd her works like Cry the Peacock in 1963, Where Shall We Go This Summer in 1975, Fire on the Mountain 1977, Clear Light of the Day in 1980, In Custody in 1984, Baumgartner's Bombay in 1988 and Journey to Ithaca in 1995. Shama Futahali born in 1952, is known for Tara Lane, which came out in 1993. Venu Chitale's In Transit, 1951. Zenath Fatehali's Zohra, 1951. Mrinalini Sarabhai's This Alone is True, in 1952, are again important novels by women writers. Atiyah Hussain's Sunlight on a Broken Column, in 1961, offers a perspective on elite women's consciousness and the representation of the distinctive Muslim culture of Lucknow before independence. Geeta Hariharan, born in 1954, takes recourse to the epic tradition and A Thousand Faces of Nights in 1992 and The Ghosts of Vasu Master in 1994 are concerned with the rewriting of folk tales and children's stories. When Dreams Travel 1999 is a kind of feminist retelling of the Arabian Nights. Arundhati Roy, who was born in 1960, is known for The God of Small Things in 1997. Jai Nimkar, who was born in 1932, is known for her first novel, Temporary Answers. Her novel, Come Rain 1933, presents a new perspective on the East West encounter. Namita Gokhale, born in 1956, again as the author of Paro, Dreams of Passion in 1984, Gods, Graves and Grandmothers in 1994, A Himalayan Love Story in 1996 and The Book of Shadows 1999. Mahatma Gandhi's Mercy Mission to Noakhale forms the backdrop of yet another novel, uh, this time by Dina Mehta's and some take a lover in 1992. It also gives us an insight into Parsi mores. The partition of 1947 is mentioned in Nina Sibyl's Yatra, Shona Singh Baldwin's What the Body Remembers in 1999, and Manju Kapoor's Difficult Doctors, which came out in 1998. Political events are important in Uma Vasudev's Shreya of Sonagar, in 1993, Meena Arora Nayak's About Daddy in 2000. Kaveri Nambisan, who was born in 1947, is known for The Scent of Pepper, which came out in 1996, The Truth Almost About Bharat in 1991, and Mango Colored Fish in 1998. Arundhati Roy, born in 1961, Anita Nayar, born in 1966, and Susan Vishwanathan, who wrote something barely remembered stories in 2000, explore regional fiction. 
Gita Mehta's Raj in 1989 offers an evocative picture of life in an Indian royal family. Suniti Nam Joshi, who was born in 1941, uses fantasy and surrealism in The Conversations of Tao in 1985, Saint Suniti and the Dragon in 1994, and Building Babel in 1997. Nina Sibyl's novel Yatra is reminiscent of Rushdie's magical world. The Mistress of Spices, which came out in 1997 by Chitra Banerjee Dibakaruni, also employs magic realism. Women writers also have explored the short story as well as non-fictional genres, biography, autobiography and so on. The most known are Torudat's essays, including the one on Derosio in the Bengal magazine, which came out in December 1874, Cornelia Sarabji's Pardanashi in 1917, Shubala, a child mother in 1920. She wrote biographies of her parents, therefore, 1922, Susie Sarabji, Christian Parsi educationist of Western India in 1932, India Calling, in 1934 and India Recalled in 1936 are her famous works. Speeches and writings of Sarojini Naidu which came out in 1918, Relationship 1994, Kamala Das's autobiography My Story which came out in 1975 are some other important prose works by Indian women writers. The short stories of Ruth Pravar Chabwala like birds like fishes in 1963, An Experience of India, 1966, A Stronger Climate, 1968, and How I Became a Holy Mother, 1976, show the themes of cultural conflict. Other collections include Anita Desai's Games at Twilight and Other Stories, 1978, Krishna Hathi Singh's Shadow on the Wall, 1948, Atiya Hussain's Phoenix Fled and Other Stories, 1953, Jai Nimkar's The Lotus Leaves and Other Stories, 1971, Sujata Bala Subramaniam's The House in the Hills and Other Stories, 1973, Kamala Das's A Doll for the Child Prostitute, 1977. As far as drama is concerned, Cornelia Sorabji wrote the first drama, a parable play in English, Goldmohar Time, 1930. Bharti Sarabhai's plays The Well of the People in 1943 and Two Women in 1952 show a distinct impact of Gandhian thought and are viewed as products of the Gandhian age. The Well of the People at Verse play is based on a true story published in Gandhi's Harijan about an old widow who is unable to go on a pilgrimage to Banaras and fulfill her desire to wash her sins in the sacred Ganga and who consequently decides to spend her money in getting a well dug for the untouchables in a village. Modern Indian women playwrights question gender stereotyping and categorize role playing and offer a candid reflection of gender issues and female experience hitherto marginal in dramatic representations. They also contribute to regional theatre in terms of combining indigenous and European traditions. Some important names in Indian theatre are Mahashweta Devi, Nabanita Dev Sen, Saoli Mitra, who are active in Bengali theatre, Dhiruben Patel and Varsha Adalja in Gujarati theatre, Mannu Bhandari and Kusum Kumar, Mridula Garg, Shanti Mehrotra and Minal Pandey in Hindi theatre. Dina Mehta discusses social construction of gender roles in Brides Are Not For Burning, Tiger, tiger, sister like you, when one plus one makes nine. Manjula Padmanavan's Harvest, Lights Out, Hidden Fires, Mating Season, and Poilesh and Gupta's Mangalam, Keats Was a Tuber, explore the issues of female subjectivity and consciousness, gender per perception, and the position of women. As the title of Padmanavan's Body Blows, Women, Balance, and Survival, three plays, which came out in 2000 indicates the chief motive of all the three plays is the victimization of women in Indian society. Zahida Zaidi's Burning Desert, Vera Sharma's Life is Like That in 1997 are again interesting plays in this area. This module 
thereby tries to integrate the gendered perspective into the problematics of cultural identity. The discussion of major female writers in all genres will help the readers engage with the continuing debate concerning the formation of the self. The issues of female subjectivity and consciousness, gender perception and the position of women uh, were discussed in this module. And these issues find expression in the writings of these women writers in all forms and are imbued with the nuances of a larger intellectual framework of self-fashioning and the politics of resistance. Thank you.